just an Amtrak away. That's What's going it, on, just man? One. Welcome to the Devo and Chris Joe show. Hey, Joe, it's it, like we said before we got on, it, it feels like it's been a little bit, man. It's been a while, bro, but it's, it feels great to be back. I think, you know, uh, last week wasn't feeling the greatest. Week before that, you know, we had to play a pre-recording, I believe. It's just been a while, bro, but it's good to be back. It's good to see you. You know what I mean? You got you looking looking nice and young, got a nice little fresh line and all that. So first, before we start, Joe, I got two shout outs, man. Two, two uh, important <laughs> birthdays today. Uh, first one, my guy Mookie Jones. Shout out to our, right. to our guy Mook. You know what I mean? Mook, one of the best dudes you'll meet, man. And then uh, my pops, man. My pops passed away what, almost eight years ago. And it's his birthday today. Funny that him and Mook shared the same birthday. Two, two of the realest right there. Mm -hmm. Two of the realest guys mm -hmm. right there. So happy birthday to happy my guys, birthday, man. Many blessings. Yes, yeah, sure. many sure. blessings. Happy birthday. And, and then I want to get into Q's Duke, and we'll talk. We'll talk uh, the game tonight, bro. Clemson, and then uh, you know we'll talk. You know what does Q's have to do? Uh, I guess to kind of make an NCAA tournament run. It's looking real bleak right now. Obviously, um, you know it's not looking good for us after uh, you know our performance against Duke. Uh, but yeah, let's let's hop into that, man. What'd you think, Joe? I mean, I, you know, I think it was one of Duke's best performances. And then I, I think it was one of our, you know, worst performances of the season. So when you put that together, I guess that's what you're going to get, you know, the, uh, <laughs> you know, what happened. What'd you think, bro? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like you mentioned, I think Duke, one thing that in, I, I can't really say impressed me, but one thing that stood out to me about Duke was the way they were moving the ball, right? They moved the ball extremely well. I feel like it wasn't sticking, you know, in a zone naturally when you see a zone, um, it tends you tend to pass, maybe pass fake, and then another pass. They were getting it on the on the catch. They were ripping, attacking the gaps, uh, getting into the middle, finding shots, finding shooters. So they really did a great job, especially like their guards, Roach, and you know, getting into that middle and creating for others. Um, they were doing a phenomenal job on the high lows, getting alley oop dunks, and getting just little uh, short corner feeds from the high post. And I think. Um, that's what that's what it really was. Like, you know, obviously a zone, just like in man to man, it has weak spots as long as you, you got to exploit that. And I think they did a good job of exploiting the, the weakness of the zone on that particular day, which was, you know, we were a step slow to rotations. There's only but so many good rotations you can make before they find the, the, the crack and then fucking attack it. You know what I'm saying? So they did a good job of doing that. And then, of course, uh, they made shots. They shot 50% from three. You know, that's going to be hard to sell to, you know, really beat anybody. They didn't really even get to the free throw line for, I think they shot four, two, three, four, five free throws um, for the game. You know what I mean? What is it? They shot four for four from the line, right? So they didn't get there a whole lot, you know? So they weren't being ultra aggressive. Everything they got was pretty much wide open. We weren't, they weren't, you know, getting contested at the rim. The alley-oops, you see, there was a bunch of alley-oops. Um, and then the rest of that was threes, bro. Uh, 13 for 26 from the three. Yeah, 54% for the game, 50% from the three, bro. 38 rebounds, so they out-rebounded us by 13. Uh, on the season, bro, they came in shooting 32% from the three-point mm -hmm. line, averaging six makes a game. They come in, shoot 50%, and then make 13 threes. Yep. So, so really, bro, from the beginning of the game, I mean, it, I think in the beginning it was back and forth a little bit. Duke did a good job of letting us stay in the game by turning it over, you know, three, four possessions in a row. Um, but ever, you know, from then on, they went on a 21 to two run. Uh, we did a little yeah, bit. We try to, we try to press, try, yeah. yeah, try to fight back at the end of the first half. And, and even I'm looking at, you know, Joe and Judah's numbers, Joe had 21, Judah had 18, but it seemed like a lot of those buckets we were getting, I guess when it didn't really matter, you know, when, when the game was kind of already decided, um, and, and yep. usually the, the, our three days, those are usually our, con, our consistent guys talking about Joe, Jesse, Jesse and Judah. Um, and we didn't get anything from Jesse, you know, five and five. It was tough for him. I think, you know, Duke did a great job. Now we got to give credit to Duke too, Joe. Like they did a great of job course. of being physical with Jesse, pushing him out, making him catch it far away from the basket. Uh, and, and we talked about it the whole year when he catches it far away from the basket. I think it's, it just makes it harder on itself. 
um, it, it, it creates less spacing for the team. So, I mean, Duke did a really good job of really just taking them out of the game, bro. I mean, we only had 25 yeah. rebounds as, as a team. Um, you know, Judah, he was, he, he did, he was aggressive. I thought he, he made some plays. Um, like I said, a lot of the buckets were kind of, yeah, yeah. That's, which is promising to see. Um, but overall, like we were out of it, man. Yeah. We, we were never really in the game. You know, we said in the beginning, I thought Duke played, you know, one of their best games all year. Now, bro, we got to take into account too. Duke has, has been playing injured the whole year. I mean, I think the Syracuse game was their first time that they were back to full strength where they had all their players, you know, talking about Derek Whitehead. And um, I know Derek Lively, I think he missed some time. Um, but now it, you see it like John Shire. I think he's done a pretty good job with those guys. They always have talent, but, but now, you know, they're young this year, but now you start to see them, you know, starting to put it together on, on both ends of the floor. And, and I mean, they play good basketball, bro. And, and we, not Shit. Even. We we fucking stunk. Just to be just to be honest, you know what I mean. It was, and you know what, Joe is kind of. It was kind of disheartening to see just because of how well we've been playing. You know, go, you know, yeah. um, North Carolina State, and then winning those two on the road, uh, Florida State, and um, who, who was the other one we won on the road? Um, the heck am I? I'm drawing a blank, dude. Who was it? We. Had? BC, sorry, yeah, BC, BC, Boston College. So yeah, so I mean, we we've been playing pretty good. So to see how they played against Duke, and you know, shout out to the Cuse Nation too, bro. Thirty-one thousand strong. That I mean, I can't. When was the last time we had thirty thousand? Thirty thousand in the dome. So they they did all they could to bring that support and, and that energy, and we just we just didn't perform well at all. You know, you know what else, E. Um, I mean, another kind of, or I guess, numbers that jump out. Obviously, we we got everything that we could get out of um, Joe and uh, Judah. But as far as wing play, as far as, you know, we, we didn't get much from Justin. Obviously, he played, he played 20 minutes. He wasn't able to produce, um, I'm sure, obviously, how he wanted to, but how we need him to, more importantly. Um, or Bell. Ben, Benny, uh, Chris Bell. So, you know, just just from from them alone, zero rebounds for Bell. How many? Uh, two, two rebounds for Benny. You know, four rebounds from Justin. But, like, the point column, you know what I mean? We need – if Jesse's not going to be scoring, bro, it's going to be tough. If if, if Judah and, and, and Joe are the ones carrying the load, which is expected of them, you know, and, and Jesse, obviously, like you said, the three J's got to do it, their part and be consistent every night. That supporting cast has to be outstanding, especially against a team like Duke. You know, you got to rise to the occasion um, and, and, and really get up for those games. I was surprised just by the by the outcome of those those three guys put together. You know what I mean? Um, We've been talking about the whole year too, games, bro. Yeah, yeah, we have. We have. We definitely have been. So it's going to be tough if we, if we can't get that production out of – if they can't combine for solid production – you know, within three, between three, four of those guys, what one person should be bringing is going to be tough as hell to win. And, and like the tough. forward spot, the forward spot is a, you know, a spot we've been talking about the whole year. We, we like what Malik Brown, you know, has been bringing, but you know, he, you know, he really didn't do much this game. Uh, you know, he plays hard. He's, you know, he's always going to compete. Um, but like you said, Joe, we need guys to contribute in the scoring column. We need guys to rebound. We guys need to be active on the rotations defensively in that spot. I mean, just to be honest, you know, has not been consistent. It's been, it's been up and down throughout the whole year. And even when, you know, our three J's talk about, you know, Jesse, Joe and Judah play well, if, if those guys aren't consistent or if we don't get, you know, like you talked about a combination from, from all three of those guys at that spot, it's tough to win games. You know what I mean? Now you take away Jesse not playing well, and it's it, you're really in a bad spot, especially against a, a Duke team that is just starting to come together and, 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 you know, come to full strength. So 
uh, you know, I, I mean, that's the position coach. You, you you listen to him after every pre- after every game at the press conference, bro. He he talks about that that forward position, you know. And we've we've seen that they're capable. You know, we've seen Chris Bell, yeah. you know, capable down at Florida State and other games scoring the ball. Uh, you know, defensively he he could be active. You know, we've seen Malik. He's he's done a great job. He's I thought he's been the biggest surprise, but he's he's done a great job. He's been pretty consistent. <laughs> But not really a scorer right now, you know what I mean. Even though we've seen him have games where he's had he's had double yeah, figures, yeah. high you know high points. But you know we need consistency from that spot, and that's a spot I think. historically, Joe, yeah, that is our best spot yep. for real. If you think it's, yep. you're talking about yep. the guys like you and and, and Wes Johnson and uh, you know who Dante Green. Um, you know, just just to name a few. I mean, you go, you go down the line. It's John you know, Hall, Hall and Billy. You could, you could, you could, you could go yeah, right. You yeah, could go yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Mellow. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mellow, you know, it's yep, yep. So it, it's just a spot that it, we've been struggling with the whole year. And if we can get consistency out of that spot, it, it, and it's we got four games left, bro. You know what I mean? We got we got tonight at Clemson. Uh, Saturday at Pittsburgh, back home two games with with Georgia Tech and and uh, Wake Forest to close it out, and then we got to go. We got to do something in the tournament and down in Greensboro. You know what I mean? We we might have to get five in a row. You know, to give yeah. that puts us at at I think what twenty one wins. I mean, I think we're in the discussion. You know, but we have a lot of work to do, and it's just I don't know. It just doesn't seem like you know coming off this Duke game. You know that that the guys yeah. are are going to do it. I don't know. What do you think, bro? No, I I agree. I mean, it's going to take a lot of uh, I don't want to say soul searching, but you're going to have to dig deep as hell, you know, to try to come out with that enthusiasm and that energy that you need to be able to win four games in a row. It's hard to do, especially when you're in a Power Five conference, bro. And you know, you you got Clemson tonight, who's no cakewalk. They play well at home too. They've been playing some good basketball. You know what I mean? None of the games that we have coming forward is going to be just, okay, an automatic W, especially for us. We're not that type of team that could just mark it off on our calendar. Every game is going to have to be a dogfight, but not against the other team, a dogfight within yourself. You know what I mean? You're going to have to fight yourself to to make sure you wake up and you do what you're supposed to do. Like, fuck it. Let me do everything right, you know what I'm saying, in this moment, every game, like while I'm on the floor, to make sure that we can make that next, that potential leap and, and, and give ourselves a chance to make the tournament. You know, uh, you know, and then of course you're talking about four games. Okay, now you're going into the ACC, ACC play, like you said, in Greensboro, which isn't going to be easy. Now, if we can go in there, you know, are we, are we, you know, is it wish, is wishful thinking to say we're going to go in there and just, you know, go ahead and, and, and win it? But it's not impossible. Shit happens, bro. Basketball is a game of matchups. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's about the matchup that you have, not necessarily the ranking. You know, sometimes you match up better against a team, you know, and, 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 you, and you can. Just, pull out a win. You know what I mean? One day the ball might be falling for you. Like you just mentioned, Duke was shooting 36% before coming in, coming into the dome and they shot 13 for 26. You know what I mean? That night might just be the night that you're hitting. So um, obviously it's going to take a little bit of luck and a lot of hard work, but I never count us out, bro, ever. And that's not me. Well, I guess that is me being biased, but I'll never count, count us out. As bad as it may seem right. from the outside <laughs> looking in, <laughs> I'll never count us out. But, um, you know, like I, I mentioned, I know there's one. I know there's one guy that we could play like. If we were to play like one person, bro, for us to get four wins and win the ACC championship. Oh, hold on, give me a second. I'll show you who we got to play like. All right, let me. Let... <laughs> yeah. Give me a second. Here. We got. Let me show you who we got. We got going. What we got going, baby? This who we got to play like, bro. Yeah. This motherfucker right yeah. here. You feel me? This dude right here, we go out there and play like this dude, we good. Man, we, we, we got to go out there. Yeah, a killer. You got to be a killer out on the floor. That's, that's it. it, bro. That's that's the mindset that you got to have. You, you, you got to. Michael Myers. That's it. You come out there with that cold-blooded, that, that cold-blooded shit. You come out there, you're cold blooded. Don't smile, don't do nothing. Just go out there, blank face, and kill motherfuckers. You feel me? That's it. When, when shit, when, when you go, we turn it over, bad pass, miss shot, fuck it, killer mentality, go through it. And, it. and the thing is, Joe, I want you, first of all, 
if you if you can do the rest of the show with that on, that's you, you a champ. You a champion if you. It's hot as shit. It's hot as shit already. It's, I'm gonna take that off again. It's hot, man. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. But this Look, is what we gotta play like, man. We gotta channel our inner Michael Myers, man. We gotta channel him. That's a fact. And the ACC, bro. That's that's for real for me. That's why I do still believe that they have a chance because the ACC is is down. It's it's wide open. You know what I'm saying? Anyone can beat anyone. You know, we've seen Clemson at the top. You know, we've seen Pittsburgh at the top. Now, you know, we're starting to see, I guess, the more historically teams, historically good teams at the top. We're talking about Virginia being number one in the conference, but how does the motherfucker get? <laughs> but, man, I, I, bro, I'm for real, man. Like, I, they say, you say five in a row. Shit, I say we can do it. Like, all these teams, we're capable of beating it. You know, going down yeah. to Clemson, to Pittsburgh, it's going to be a tough task. So I think those two home games, you know, that we got you know, on Tuesday and Saturday, Georgia Tech and, and Wake Forest, I think we can handle business. You know what I mean? I think Wake Forest will be a tough one, but that is alumni weekend. You got the 2003 National Championship team coming back. It's going to be a good crowd. I think the vibe, the energy is going to be really good, and it's going to, uh, you know, trickle down to the team and, and, and the players. So, um, but speaking of going on the road, bro, what, what what was your mindset like going on the road, and what was the difference being at home with that mindset? Like, so your your mindset, I, I, and obviously we approach every game the same way. We want to with the same type of mindset, but it is a difference, you know, playing at home and, and, and playing on the road. You know, obviously at mm-hmm. home you get there early. You, you can get there whenever you want, for real. You know, yeah, you, yeah. you got the crowd behind you. On the road, it's kind of more, you know, you, you're getting there. You got less time to, to go in. I think we get there, what, 5.30 or whatever the game is, an hour and a half. Yeah, it was exactly. always or hour exactly. and 20. Hour. Yeah. Exactly, hour yeah. and a half. So what what was your, your mindset, bro, going on the road um, versus being at home? To be real with you, E, like – my, I, I, I excluded my freshman year. My freshman year, I feel like I, I didn't impact the game, you know, much. I mean, you know, I had some games where I did play well early on against Florida, where the classic pick came about. Um, I, I played well at Memphis, you know, but that was the, 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 the classic pick came about. But, um, you know, I didn't feel like I had much of an impact on whether we won or we lost, you know, during Big East play. Now, Going into my sophomore and beyond, sophomore to senior year, bro, I'm going to be real with you. I mean, the, the the team, we just were so confident, dog. Like, that sophomore year when we end up, you know, with Wes, Andy, and all those guys, every game, bro, we, we, we truly felt there's no one in the country that could fuck with us. You know what I mean? So going to my sophomore. So the mentality on the road was, for one, we know we're going to see and hear enough Orange of Orange Nation to feel – Comfortable, you know, we hear them. Yeah, in some <laughs> places, bro. Travel. Orange Nation is traveling. Yeah, they traveling, and and there's Syracuse fans everywhere. We go to South Florida to play. To play now. It, it's 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 orange. You know what I mean? So, um, that for me it was like obviously there's a difference. You're not home. You don't know these rims and things of that nature. But we just had so much confidence that we felt like. Like I said, no one, no one in the country could fuck with us. And the same thing going into my junior year. We started off the season going to Atlantic City um, where we won a, a preseason tournament. We beat Georgia Tech, um, Michigan. I don't know if we played two or three games, but we, we definitely beat Michigan and Georgia Tech because we played Tim Hardaway Jr. He was at Michigan at that point. He was a freshman, and we played Iman Shumper. He was at Georgia Tech. Um, mm, tough. You know, so that – yeah, so, you know, that's and who they had, Glenn Rice Jr. So they had a good little team. But going into that year, winning that tournament, Rick Jackson, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the center, you know what I mean? Big double-double guy, 14 and 10, 14 and 12, whatever it was. Mean, mean as fuck. Building that, mean, mean as fuck. Mean as fuck. Come on, come on, cuz. <laughs> hey, but look, hey, Joe, and sorry, sorry to get off track, but you need a motherfucker. I want a motherfucker like that on my team every time. Yeah. Every time he, I'm telling you, if if something go down, Rick right in the mix. Like that's me in the mix. That's missing. Like right now, that's kind of that, that's missing. You know what I mean? Like yeah, Rick yeah. not letting nothing and happen not, to nobody. And and he might fuck around and go and instigate real quick too. 
on some shit. You know what I mean? Just like, man, this is like, like you, it's you and it's you, him, and and then your defender. He talking to you right in the defender face. You been busting this motherfucker ass all night. E. Keep going, it's you know. What I mean? like, <laughs> like that's the t- that's the type of mind Rick game. Say like, some shit like, yeah, nah, for sure. True story. Uh, Rick could say some shit like, "Hey, Joe, hey, Joe, he, he can't guard you, cause keep going, cause he can't." Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he was saying, <laughs> you know, he shout out to Rick, man. Like that's really him. So yeah, going on the road is obviously different, cause but I used to, I personally, I mean, everybody likes getting the win on the road, but I loved. You know, getting roadkill, bro. Like, I loved it. Going to, you know, just just shutting the crowd up, hitting a big shot, and just hearing the crowd go silent, and then just hearing Syracuse fans go crazy. You could see the face on the fans that just feel like, God damn, we're outmatched. Like, no matter how loud we cheer, we can't do shit because these boys going crazy. You know what I mean? And then at home, obviously, it's love. At home, is always going to be love, bro. Um, but on the road, I I really enjoy getting roadkill and. You know, that's why it pissed me off so bad when, when they stormed the court when we lost to Notre Dame. I'm like, fuck, you know, these motherfuckers yeah. out here, bro, storming the court, pushing me around and shit. So um, the mentality was always just let's go get a win. No matter what, let's come out of this motherfucker victorious. We got to find a way. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hostile. You play at a place like West Virginia. You play at a place like Pittsburgh. You know it's going to be a hostile environment. We got to figure out a way to win. We got to fi- figure out a way to tune out the crowd early because obviously – as as cliche as it is, the fans are the six men. You feed off of the, the you feed off of the energy of the crowd. You know, you hit a big shot, it's loud as shit. You might force a tur- the crowd might force a turnover because yeah. you call the play, you call the play, and I didn't hear it, and I'm running, I'm cutting when I'm supposed to be, you know, and I, we turn the ball over. So you know, just these little things. You want to be able to tune the crowd out early so they get out of it. You know, you want to be able to get on like a six like 7-2 run, 8-1 eight, eight, run or something like that early to get the crowd out of it. You know what I mean? Getting that good start definitely is crucial on the road. I, bro, I always like <laughs> playing on the road just first off because I, I love being the guy that they yelled at. That that shit got me going more. Like the crowd. when it, I You were, was you were definitely target. him. I was definitely a target. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a target. So, but, so that, I, I fed off that already. And then I feel like it was us against them. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as like, we're in our hotel, we're bunkered down. Like it's just us. We don't have any distractions from, you know, the home crowd or like the outside, like, you know how how sometimes you at home, it just, you got more distractions. People know they could ask for tickets and whatnot, whatever it is. So I just, I just felt on the road. We were just more, I guess, tight knit at sometimes. And then, you know, guys were hanging out in the rooms. Like I'm, (laughs) In, you know, one we went to Kansas City talking about the talking about the famous fist bump that was in Kansas City against Florida. But yeah. Yeah. I remember one moment where you know we were just in the hallway messing around with swirls. You know, what I mean, this motherfucker Paul <laughs> go, goes down, goes downstairs, gets a hotel key. How does he get it for swirls room? I don't know. <laughs> he, he he made that shit happen. Shout out to Paul because Paul used to, shout out to Paul. Paul is a jumpster, man. <laughs> But he got the key. Gets in the room, bro. Some highs in the shower. You know what I'm saying? We out, we outside of the room. This motherfucker swirls in there sleeping. He don't even know that Paul's in there. So you mean just like (laughs) you know what I mean? Swirls end up. He scared. I think he ended up scaring the shit out of Swirls for real. But just like those little shits on the road, like it made it made us closer. You know what I'm saying? Now now going into the game, like. And we had a group. We locked locked in. We're, we're locked in on the road. You know what I'm saying? No, so sure, bro. You talking shit to us? We had guys that loved loved that. And and I keep saying, I just feel like that's that's missing like a mentality in the in the approach. I'm not like these guys can hoop, man. Like you see, guys out there can play. They got some skill. Joe and Judah, like they've been having a great year. Jesse been having a great year. You, you see, like these young freshmen, they show flashes. Like they're capable, but. Mm-hmm. Joe, it come down to a mindset, bro, in your approach. Like, even when shit happens, like when you're going through something, when you're playing bad, when coach on you, when when you know you fucked up and you know you go, you got to turn and look to that sideline, coach sitting there right there, motherfucker, <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> wait, wait, waiting for you at half court. Like, it's about at being able to play court, through dog. that. <laughs> yeah, but play through that and, 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 like, let it motivate you to go ahead and play harder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's just it, it, it's missing to me, and I don't know if it's because dudes don't love it like that, or, and they're not as passionate about it. Because 
you know, it's so, so much other shit that comes into play, but, and I'm sorry to get off track from talking about on the road, but I just feel like that no, that's, that's cool. so important for all of these kids to know their approach and how they're going about playing the game. Like if you could, bro, and bro, like you, so you coach a high level prep team, a high level, right? Uh, it's prep or no? no. Yeah, yeah it's high, prep. It's prep. High, high level prep guys going division one. So these guys are already talented and skilled, right? But the biggest thing is you trying to get them to compete as hard as they can. Because when dudes compete as hard as they can, like you, go, you're going to make mistakes, but you're going to make up for those mistakes and give yourself a chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so when guys figure out how to continue to play through those mistakes, like through those adversities, that they, they find out like what type of player they could be. You know what I'm talking about? Like the, you, you'll never know what type of player you could be if you don't go <laughs> as hard as you can. And, I, and, and that yep. goes for dudes who are, bro, we've all seen it. We've seen dudes who are lazy as shit, but talented as fuck. Like, the dude get a bucket just on some lazy shit. But just imagine if he was going hard as shit and just, you know what I mean, competing at the at the highest level. You know what I mean? My man would be, he goes from, like, a, a, a great player that everybody talking about to being in the league type shit. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? I, yep. I don't know if these players understand, like, because it's a big difference between that and that. And playing as hard as he fucking can. You know what I'm saying? And and, and I know you can relate to that because you that's what you're really trying to coach most of the time. I, I maybe yeah, exactly. I'm wrong, but you know? No, hundred percent, bro. Hundred percent. And I wanna just piggyback off something you said. Um about when coach gets on you. And bro, I know and this is a prop like, you know, there's some kids who deal with that better than others, right? But I feel like when I played, I was one of those guys early on that you know, was in the quote unquote dog house. You know what I mean? I feel like until my junior ish senior year, you know, I was I was finally let loose and I was in the yard roaming free. Other than that, like, you know, I was real <laughs> you know, coach was on me. <laughs> coach was on me. But the thing is, bro, is like maybe it was, you know, at the end of the day, now when I'm looking back, because I'm I do the same shit, bro. Like kids might take it personal, but it's never personal. Why would I be coming at you in any personal, you know, form. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get you to be the best version of yourself out there. You know what I mean? And and that's what I feel like a lot of kids in general, not just at Syracuse, need to understand is that your coach is not trying to belittle you or um make you feel like shit or whatever the case may be. Bro, he's trying to get the best out of you. So maybe that might come in the form of reverse psychology and telling you you ain't shit so that maybe you could show me that you are something you feel me like i remember coach saying shit taking me out the game and saying shit like you're fucking done here son you're you're fucking done you're done <laughs> you know, i'm like <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and i'm on yeah. the bench and i'm fucking fuming you know what i'm saying if this is looney tunes i got the steam coming out my ears and all type of shit right <laughs> but at the end of the day at the end of the day on the bench all i'm thinking about is oh yeah he thinks i'm done here bro wait till he sent me back in the game and watch me go ahead and grab like three rebounds get a fast break dunk you know sometimes bro where you might dunk the ball and i'm looking at that coach not really the bench i'm looking at coach like, yeah, bro, yeah, look, look. Like, and, and, and you and you 100 percent right but that but me playing devil's advocate you had that mindset you know what i'm saying when, when coach was asking you like how did, how do you get it across to these kids to have that type of mindset that you were just talking about? You, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's, I think that's, the, that's where the disconnect is. Like, the, the, you know, a coach could go at these kids, yell at these kids. They not taking it like how we used to take it. You know what I'm saying? Like they, mm -hmm. it, maybe like they shut going in a shell or what mentally they just, whatever. Like for me, I know that was instilled for me at a young age. Like I had AAU coaches, like they, they were really literally knocking you in your chest. Like, man, what's up? You ready to play? Like, so that shit was coach Bayhai was nothing. You know what I'm saying? But like nowadays it's, it's different, bro. It, it, it just is like, so how do you get that, yep. that approach and that mindset across to these kids? You know what I mean? Cause he, how Bayhai was doing it might, I don't know if that, and, and I don't know, it, it, it might not be the best approach, but that's just him. Like that's, he's been doing it for so long. It's not time for him to change like that. It, I mean, he's not going. But I don't I know think, if he's going to. Bro, I think that, for, and, and, and 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 shout out to Melissa in the chat too. She's laughing at my steam, the steam coming out of my ears. Shout out to you. But um, yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. but shit. What I believe wholeheartedly, bro, is when, you know, like I, t- I tell the story countless amount of times on here, I tell certain kids that I coach the same thing. It's like, when a coach is done with you and like he's not yelling anymore, bro, that's that's when you got to be really worried. So I feel like if coach is on you and he's not giving up on you, bro, even though it's coming in the form of he's getting on you and he's yelling and he's demanding, you know, something of you is because for one, he's he's been coaching for 50 years and he and he knows talent. Like let's 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 cut the shit. He knows what talent is. He knows what it takes to get to the next level. He's coached USA basketball. He's done He's a Hall of Famer, bro. Like he's he yeah. knows what talent is. So if he's if he's on you, right, it's for a reason. Now if he stops and if he gives up on you, if he's not really, if he's like writing you off type shit, then you gotta be like, fuck, okay. Like I, if I lost coach, and it's hard, bro, and it's probably happened to him a handful of times, but it's hard, I'm sure, for coach to be like, I'm just done with this kid. You know what I mean? And 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 I find myself in similar situations where it's like, fuck, I gotta keep telling this dude like. Your job is to take care of the ball. You got to take care of the ball. And I'm on him. And he thinks that I hate him. And he thinks that, you know, I'm picking on him because, but it's like, bro, I know your potential. You don't even see the potential that you have because you're living in the moment. But I've seen top tier talent at every level. You know what I mean? I played in WCAC in high school. Obviously, I went to Syracuse, played in the Big East. I made it to the league and played a year and seen, obviously, talent. I've been overseas and seen Euro Cup, Euro League talent. At every level, I've seen what it takes for each position to be successful, you know, um, outside of the politics and the business side of shit. We're not going to get into that, but just a straight hooper. I know what it takes. So for kids, they got to understand like, bro, I'm, I'm not doing this to make you feel bad make you feel, you know, make you feel like you're not good enough. I'm trying to tell you that you are good enough and you could be better. You know what I mean? And they just got to understand that. And, Bro, that was a good point, too, that you brought up, just knowing your role, right? I mean, that's crucial. Now, even, like, I think that's something when I was playing I, that I could have figured out more. But it's so crucial nowadays. And like, if you figure out how you can be great at your role, whether it's be, being a great rebounder, being a great defender, a three-point specialist, uh, a, a perimeter defender, you know, the, you, you, the communicator, the guy, whatever it is, like, those roles are, are, are roles that are NBA jobs, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, to, so to get a kid to realize, like, one, you got to compete as hard as shit. You got to compete at the highest level. You can't even give yourself a chance. You have to. You know what I'm saying? Because not only are you going to make yourself better, you're going to make your team better. They're going to feel that energy. It, I never have I been a part of a team where if a motherfucker playing as hard as they can, that don't go off to another, to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? That, that You feel that energy. You want to play hard for that guy who's playing hard. You know what I mean? It's just, it, it, it's human nature, right? But you know, yeah, I just think that when guys know their role, right, the mentality, the approach, but know their role, bro, like this is what I got to do. I think a lot of times that's Beheim kind of like, bro, uh, first of all, he, like when, uh, and this is up for debate, but like when you've been coaching for so long, bro, and, and dealing with a certain type of player, you know what I mean? Then all of a sudden, like it changes, the whole landscape changes. It's, it's, it's hard for you and your approach to guys to change, like to, you know what I'm talking about? Like to adjust that, like to like, you've been dealing with this, this guy for a certain, you know, uh, this is how I deal with this player or this is how I deal with this guy. And you're used to that for 40 years. You know what I'm saying? Now all of a sudden it's a huge change because it is a huge change. Even when we look at it, it's a huge change in how the kids are and just mm-hmm. everything, bro. Mm-hmm. So like now when you go in and you hear, oh, he got to adjust, he got to do that. It's not as easy. It's not as easy as it seems, bro. Facts. Like when you, Facts. And, that's, Facts. and that's everyday life, bro. When you, bro, think about what you know. Somebody's been doing something for so long, for so long. It's just habitual without even think of it. Without even thinking of it. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. You, you, you're just doing it. You know what I mean? How many, you know, instances have we heard of somebody just, you know, oh, I, I didn't even know I did it. You know what I'm saying? It's just. Like that goes into Second coaching nature, a lot of bro. times. Yeah. yeah. So to, to make that adjustment, what I'm saying is like the approach, like, can he change the adjustment? Like to, to get these kids to do that, to buy into that mindset, to buy into that role. Because when they do, bro, these, these kids are going to see a lot of success. Like, like it, it talk, we talk about a kid like Benny, like we talked about him being an X factor. I think if he can really like 
you have that mindset and with him that's that mindset for really just competing hard as you can and if you guys are going through some I, I mean we want to have these guys be able to talk to somebody i'm not trying to downplay any of that type of stuff but at the same time if you're able to play and you're on the court we want to see you compete at a high level you know what i mean and and buy into your role i think if benny was a guy that really did that you know he he got NBA talent, bro, as far as to what he could bring in his role. How many guys in the yeah. NBA we see with his athletic ability and his talent? They're in the league. You know what I'm saying? Just facing exactly. the floor, you know, running up. Derrick Jones. Game rebound. Yeah. Exactly, bro. So, it, <laughs> yeah. It's so important for guys to know know their role. I wish I would have known that, like, early on. Like, hey, E, be really good at this, and you're going to have a chance. <laughs> Instead of trying to do everything, score the ball, like that's that's what the game is now. Knowing your role and, and excelling in that at a high high level, and like it, and you only get yeah. two three hoopers for real like that could do that are gonna get the opportunity to do that. Exactly, exactly. Now you look at uh, Draymond. I think this is a clip that was that came out on social media probably during the summer, and this was after you know winning the chip and all that. And I think he went to one of them Rico Hines, uh, and even Pat Bev had a moment too where he was just explaining like. I used to be a scorer. Like, I used to score the ball in high school. I yeah. won, you know, scoring titles overseas. I scored. You got to reinvent yourself at every level because yeah, when, bro, that's huge. Everybody, when, when, when everybody is the man at some point, bro, you're going to get to somewhere where, okay, now we have 12 individuals who were the man wherever they were. But at the end of the day, being the man where you were doesn't mean that there's not someone else better than you where you're going. You feel me? So now it's like, obviously, immediately you have a role change. You know what I mean? Like, you get to a team, it's, it's 10 of us. I used to, act, you know, we spoke about this before, but now, you know, X player is better than me, and so is he, and he does this better. So now, obviously, a, a coach has a job to do. Okay, shit, you were the man in high school, you did well, but now your role has to change. Your role on this team is not going to be to score 20. It's going to be maybe score eight, and you got to grab me a shit ton of rebounds. And if you're okay with doing that, you're going to, you're going to have some success. I mean, for me, bro, prime example, and I love the kid to death, Quincy Garrier left Syracuse because, you know, for whatever reason, maybe he didn't, you know, he didn't like his role on, on this team. And he went to a team where he has a lesser role today. You know what I mean? And yeah, love Quincy you know, too. Great kid. Say, yeah, love Quincy, and, and you know they say the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Funny because he wants to work that bro. shit green too, for real. But um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but like he left, he left Syracuse, bro, where he was an All ACC, the only one that year on the, on the team, All ACC. Went to Oregon to play a bigger role or different role. Maybe he wanted to shoot the ball a little bit more, and he yeah. shot the ball more, but shot a worse percentage. And now it's like he's not even playing much at all anymore. His numbers have dropped drastically since leaving Syracuse. And that comes from, I want to be the man. Like, I'm better than what I am. I'm better than what they're telling me. or they're, I'm better than what they're allowing me to be or whatever it is, whatever your mentality is at that point. But now you go somewhere, you're not even a shell of yourself and what you were. You don't even average nearly as many rebounds as you did. Like, you're not. So... Again, that's to me, that's another great example of coach knows what the fuck he's doing. Like, yes, maybe your role at Syracuse wasn't like, he got you to be an all ACC player, bro. No matter how upset you were at your role. That's tough. You know to, yeah, I mean? that's tough to transfer out of that, bro. I don't that's know tough how to other dudes, you know, uh, Kadari Richard, well, Kadari Richard, I don't know how he's doing at Seton Hall. Richmond, but like, yeah, yeah. Like Quincy. Oh, is that Richmond? I mean, he's not Richmond? doing anything. No, no, no. That's his last name, Kadari Richmond. But he's at Seton Hall. But yeah, he's not, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not. He's not doing anything crazy, bro. Both of those guys, if they would have stayed at Syracuse, had, would have had a lot of success, man, and, and had an opportunity to go pro. Both of them, and and yep, maybe they still do. But just imagine, bro. Can you imagine if we had those two? And I'm sorry to play, you know, play in the past, but. Because, <laughs> because, you know, but we're we're talking about it. You know what I mean? Like those guys yeah, yeah. really shouldn't have transferred. They they really shouldn't have transferred. For real, yeah. like Quincy again, it, was should... for, it was seeking bigger roles or seeking better opportunity. But like My you got to do your research. 
Yeah, you said that's, that. That's where it looks even. <laughs> It look, that's where it, look, it looks even crazier. So now all ACC means what? You're regarded as one of the top 15 players in the conference, correct? Is it, is it five guys per team? Yeah, something like that. First team, second team, third. Five guys, if I'm not mistaken. So now you're looked at uh, uh, out of out of however many guys there are on the roster and teams in the conference, 60, 70, however many, 100 guys, you're top 15 in the conference, which, with a, which following that year with an opportunity for obviously an increase in ro- – Coach Beheim is not a fool, bro. You, you make all ACC. You're coming back next year, and you're going to get the ball. You're going to be able to play basketball. You're all ACC because if not now, oh, maybe man, Coach looks real. like that. Like, Coach looks crazy if Quincy comes back. And, you know, again, we're not trying to talk. This happened two years ago, but shit. Again, it, it, my point was just role-seeking. You know, if you can just accept your role, role acceptance, bro, is, is huge. And I think that, to be honest, I don't speak to him that much. But if I were to ask him, do you regret leaving Syracuse? Yo, bro, it might be 70-30 and 70 being yes. Because yeah. now he's, I'm sure he's not, you know what I mean? Like, and the 30 is because I got to give him the benefit of the doubt that he's going to, you know, that he's okay with the decision that he made, you know. but I think he was playing 30 minutes a game. He was playing 30 a game. He was, playing. He, was playing. he was playing, but it's the role. I want to be the man. I want to be seen. But it's like, you don't need to be, you know, the, Whatever you think, the outsiders know. Obviously, you, a committee or coaches around the league saw you as top 15 in the conference. You know, whoever it is, I got to make the decision to, you know, the coaches, the, the ACC committee, who the fuck, whoever else, bro, saw you as top 15. So looking for a better role off of that is, is just ridiculous to me. And I was rocking. Be realistic uh, with yourself. At the end of the day, yeah, that's it. That's it. Man. It's hard for it's hard for a motherfucker to do that sometimes when you got everybody telling you something else too, bro. Cause now, cause now, like, even in your heart, like, if you know, like, damn, I probably could be better doing this, playing this role. It, it helped the team and it helped me get to the next level because they know that's what I'm gonna play at the next level anyway. I'm not gonna be the man at the next level anyway. If I'm not really the man at this level, I'm really, really not gonna be the man at the next level at the at the NBA exactly. level. You, you feel what I'm saying? So like, it's. It's almost like they're telling him something he doesn't believe it, but you sit, you hearing it so much that all right, bet that's that's what I am. You know what I mean? And instead of playing your role, and that's huge, bro. Like guys need to have people around them that are going to keep it a hundred with them. Like be realistic, like bro. Look, Judah the man, right, and this is just me generally speaking. Like Judah the man, uh, you could play off him and really eat though. You know what I mean? Like you could be that guy who gets those dump offs, and 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 on the other end, you could run hard, and you can make it easier for him. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, you could set that screen coming off, and then I'm turning and sealing my guy right under the rim, catching it, and boom! I know he can see me. He gonna find you know what I mean? And I'm and I'm talking to him. Yeah. Like that's that's another thing, bro. Like when when guys like get into a position and and at Judah at times, I I think he felt like this. Feel like they got to do everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like even when you, you you're capable of doing a lot, but you got it, it's always it's, it's not a good spot to be in when you feel like you got to do everything. You know what I mean? That's that's a lot on a, on a player's shoulders. You want to have those players around you to be like, I got you, bro. I'm gonna get you open. You know, I'm gonna set I'm gonna set yep. that screen. I'm not man. Next time you come down, I'm knocking <laughs> him in his chin, bro. I seen that. You know what I mean? Like you, that makes you feel good as the guy. Like it takes the weight off of your shoulders. It makes the team better. 100%. Like I, those are little. That's little shit, bro. That we we tell it like we putting you on game about too. Like for for young players, like 100%. that's that's how you could be a really good teammate and add value to the game, even when you're not scoring. Like that's it. You have to be able to see that, man. You got to be able to realize that. <laughs> how, how, how can I help my team win and add value, man? And we and we said this a million times, right? But it's also the era that we're in now. I, I know kids on my team even like they might like do nothing, bro. They might hit one three or and hit a and, and get a little fast break layup, and they're asking the the video coordinator guy like, "Hey, could you send me my highlights?" Like that's not a highlight. You just made a shot, and you made a layup. You know what I mean? Like you shot a couple. Like you know, it's the it's the era. It's like the era, bro. The social media era is really hurting kids to feel like they want to do something in the in a game to be put on, you know. And, and and everyone's looking for this viral moment, this viral shit, bro. It's it's ridiculous. But I I, I saw some joking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go I, ahead. Real quick, I, no joking. No, because you, you were just talking about social media phones. Joking. Noah was speaking to these kids at a camp, and he was like, "One thing I tell y'all to stop doing." 
is fucking scrolling. Stop fucking scrolling, you know, in the locker room. Stop scrolling, you know, all the time when you walk in, you know, take a minute to focus on what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? That thing will be there. That phone will be there. But it's just, it's just, it is a lot. It's a lot of different shit going on, you know, for, with these kids today that make it harder. And that's why we see every, all, you know, all the mental health stuff. going. That's why we see that, bro. It's, it's a lot of different factors that, that come into play. What you say? What, what we got going on in the chat? What? Oh, now they they going back and forth. Uh, you know, our guy, a love name child or love child named Tom. Shout out to him. Like they're just talking okay. back and then Melissa about uh just the discipline and how kids are. You know, the the differences between the eighties and the, and today. But let's take it to the chat, man. If you guys have any questions, um, whether it be about the season, about times that we were at Syracuse or whatever it is, we want to take these last. 10 or so minutes to interact with y'all shout out to our first time listeners and our long time listeners we love y'all um and let's chop it up for a little bit yo joe what do you think uh what do we got to do man i to, to make a run man to get to get get in this tournament make an ncaa tournament we're not even in the picture right now i see we're not even in the picture for the nit obviously we got to win games that's a that's an easy answer but yeah. What 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 do we have to do these last four regular season games and then going into the ACC tournament? I think, you know, something for me, bro, and this might not mean much to these guys, but something to me that I really uh, wanted to do because he was such a great leader for one was, you know, as much as I wanted to win for coach, like I wanted to win for Andy, you know, and AO, uh, although he got hurt. But my senior leaders, bro, you got to be able to commit to, you know, you got to be able to commit to those guys and try to prolong their collegiate career as much as possible. I think that to me was huge when I was playing my sophomore year. AO goes down, you know, I tell the story of my, you know, me starting to cry. Me and Hop were on the sideline, Hop threw me a towel. We had tears running down our eyes because, you know, this is your last go around and now you're hurt. So for me, you know, playing for my seniors, playing hard as shit, that's how much love I had, you know, for my senior leaders, you know, for me to be able to put my body on the line for them to, you know, try to win basketball games. Um, fortunately, we weren't in a position where we had to win to get into the tournament at that point, but just in the tournament, playing hard as shit or playing as hard as I possibly could, I thought to help them prolong the collegiate career. Um, so I think guys have to commit. We have to be committed. Obviously, like you said, the easy answer is we got to win. Yes. But to get to those wins, Everybody has to commit, bro, to the cause and to the one goal that we all have in common. Um, it can't be, again, no individual agendas. We all have to be on the same page, bro. We all have to be trying to win. And I think the seniors have to make a push and be vocal about, like, yo, I need you guys, bro. If we don't, like, my career can't be over in four games, basically. Like, my collegiate career can't be over March 4th. You know what I'm saying? I want to play beyond that point. So, if, he, if, if those guys can rally those guys and get them to, you know, fight just a little bit harder every possession, you know, that would be a great first step. And I think that's that's a awesome thing is – or awesome mindset to have, awesome perspective is playing for those guys, like those seniors. Like like you said, lengthening them, their career a, a little bit more, giving them a few more games, get them, giving them some, some postseason games – and uh, you know, as a you know, it's a lot of freshmen. If you could develop that mindset, just that approach that we've been talking about the whole show for real, like I think it changes the whole team dynamic. You know, like like when you hear a guy you know complaining or doing this, doing that, and you have that approach. Hey, man, like give us everything you got in practice. I need to get better, bro. Like I That's need it. to get better. Like even if you're not playing, bring it, bring it to me in practice. Really make, make me get better. Help me out for this team. That's going to be pressuring me. Get up in me, make me play. Like when we're going through yep. scout, make sure I know everything that's fucking going on. You know, keep me on track. Like that's yep. how you get great teams together. You know what I mean? Everybody has a role, even if they're not playing, you know what I mean? Like, like from, even from the walk-ons, like what's, what, what's your role to give us energy? Like when, when it's going bad, yes, like keep what, you know what I'm saying? It sounds like uh, maybe it sounds cliche or corny or whatever, but wave that towel as hard as you can. Yell as loud as you can. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's giving us our, that energy that we need. Like everyone yeah. has that role, bro. And, and, and once you have that, once you have that mindset, playing for my seniors, I want them to continue to play. You'll do it. Like, this team, 
This team has the talent, but it brings us to another point too, bro. We'll, who will come back? You know what I mean? We, it, we talk about Joe and Jesse being seniors, but I believe they do have the COVID year. And now with like the NIL oh, yeah. stuff, yeah. I, and now Jesse, I see Jesse. I think if he leaves, he, he's a he, he could get drafted. Joe would be tougher for Joe. I think he could go obviously go overseas and and play. He'll get some he'll get some uh, some tryouts, but. Um, I think realistically speaking, he'll probably end up going up to year. But so for Joe, do you stay and get another year, take advantage of the NIL? You can come back, fuck around, make more from the NIL than you do from overseas. And now get yeah. you a bag from that and then go ahead, break records, do all that. You play, what, that'd be your yeah. what, fifth year or something. You'll, you'll break a lot of records. You'll fuck around, get into top five all scoring, possibly. Yep. It, it, yep. it's a lot of it's a lot of pros to it and I don't see many cons. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> come get a bag. I don't see I don't see yeah, I don't see any cons. Right. Get you some money, break a few records, you know what I'm saying? And uh and then go on your way, bro. You probably don't gotta take many classes, you probably take some shit like uh you know, uh fucking okay, tennis. Br- br- Brewery, tea brewing, coffee brew, I don't know what pottery, uh, fucking <laughs> pottery <laughs> making <laughs> Camping, uh, go out there and explore the great outdoors. Yeah, you know what that's, that's what I'm saying, bro. bro. I, I just, I just think that it'd be because look, too, bro. We we don't have any other guards coming in next year. We just we'll, we'll talk about the big fella we just signed. We just signed the big fella William Patterson out of Brooklyn, seven <clears> two. <throat> so he's coming in right away. That's a, that's a guy who he's built similar to Jesse, long, lanky, athletic. He's mobile. He can move. Still a little bit raw offensively, but he, I think he's more skilled than people would think. You know, we've seen yeah. the improvement from freshman year till now with Jesse. Coaching exactly. staff's done a great job with guys, you know, typically with guys who come in with that build and, and that skill set. Just the big, you know, he, yeah, hell yeah, the bigs in general. Yeah, the, our bigs in general really progress well, bro. Like, our guards are always pretty solid coming in. And, you know, um, our bigs always have been developed correctly. You know, if they stand the test of time and they, you know, injuries and all that stuff, and they just stay the course. Man, you think about all the bigs that we've done had. Again, again, and that comes with coaches' ex- experience coaching and seeing the talent and seeing how, okay, yeah, I've seen this before. I've seen this frame before. You know, we could develop this into something. You know what I mean? All except one. I feel like probably there's only been one, or at least that I know. I already you know, know who it is. I already, I already know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> who is it? Does so, it start with an S? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ball, oh, yeah. Uh, man, come on. We ain't even, we ain't even going to do it like that. But you, you, you already know, man. That, and you right on that, yo. God damn. But no, typically, like... They do a great job. To, and then, and Joe, I, I said it the other day to somebody. We were talking, like, we'll give a seven-footer a year or, or maybe no, a year no. and a half, two years. You know what I'm saying? But if you a six-foot guard, you better come in right away, motherfucker, and be ready. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, you don't get that time. It's just, bro, you don't exactly. get that time. That's just the reality of it. So if you a guard, usually at this high level, if you come here, you're, you're somewhat ready to play. You know what I'm saying? Unless unless you're six seven, six six, they see that potential. You're still growing in your body. You six two, six point guard. You better come in and be fucking dynamic. You, no you know question. what I'm saying? That's just <laughs> Judah Mintz. You know, you got guys you know. like that. You know what I mean? Johnny Flynn, like Tyler Ennis. I mean, the list goes on, bro. From from those guys came in and they were ready. You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see Big Fella though. Uh, you know, I think yeah, he, he yeah, has some potential. Yeah, seven, seven two, two frame, bro. And just, we need that in the Brooklyn, middle. You know, that's the, I guess that's the uh, stereotype. But you from Brooklyn, you know, you got some dog and you 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 ready to work. You know what I'm saying? Like just that that yeah. environment, probably. You know, you're, you're you're ready to put some work in. You know, you play in the parks, you play outdoors. Like you know, you know about hoop. So we're hoping. Um, that he can come in and develop pretty quickly because I guess well, who's coming back at that position? Well, Hema, Hema would be back. Jesse, like you said, can come back. But, hey, at the end of the day, if you want to – and some people might love college that much. Jesse looks like a kid that really enjoys college. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. If it, if, if it was any time to come back, I think it would be this year, bro. 
just because we don't have really anybody anybody coming in at all. Like, so if everyone's going to come back, this would be the year to do it. You know what I mean? No. And that's it. Will they? He could break some records too. All time blocks, something. Like, he could probably get some Um, stuff too, bro. Top five rebounds, top three, whatever it may be. So, I don't see why if they don't give, hey, here go 100 racks, whatever it is, real quick. Shit, all right, man. I'll see you in I'll see you in August. You know what I'm saying? Like what you mean? Like I I will see you in August. I don't see why not. I'm just now that I'm thinking about it for real, it, it I guess it would make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like it because there's not a lot of people we don't we only have one recruit coming in. We don't have any guards, any four like next year we got the, the uh really good guard, um I think he's a junior this year, was it Chopper? This is they call him Chopper or something, but uh, he he's good, but shit. If you gonna come back, this might be it, man. And and, and run it back, yeah. shit. We already know and, and get better. Like it. If you look at it like exactly. that, we're being we're always gonna be a bias, Joe. But if you look at it like that, if you if you look at where the team was at the beginning of the year till now and the improvement that they made, a year wiser, a year stronger, a year more skilled, a year more now. together. I, I, shit, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm putting yep. some, you know, put some be... hope out there, man. Yeah, yeah. Look, you bring this this group together. Come on, man. Like you said, we 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 took we had our strides, and it's just just the growth, knowing the game of bat, the collegiate level of basketball, what it takes. So now you're gonna go into the summer lifting a little bit, lifting a little harder, working out a little bit harder, and then you come back, bro. We might be fucking preseason top, you know, top twenty five with this whole team coming back. And knowing the zone, that's huge. Just knowing the, the the concept of the zone, what coach wants to accomplish out of it, and then being able to adjust it depending on what teams you play and the personnel you go against. Another year of that, bro. Come on, man. I, I, you know what? I think they. I'm still giving them a chance right now, man. I think for, we'll start tonight. Now, look, if we lose tonight, it's over, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna be, you know what I'm saying? It's it, it, it's over, but I'm, I'm still giving them giving them a chance. They pull four in a row, go on a little one two game streak. Yep. you never know. Anything's you, you possible. Never know. Anything's possible. One step at a time. One game at a time. One possession at a time. Maybe that's what we gotta do. One possession at a time. Now, real quick, Joe. Chat. Before Ooh. before before we uh before we get off, we got a couple about two minutes. You got anything you got going on, man, coming up you want to share? I want to let our, our uh, people in the chat know, our viewers know what's going on. Do you got anything going on? Let me know, man. Nada. Nothing going on, man. I'll be um, potentially, I think I'll okay. be in the Q's on the 28th, though, watching the, watching the game. I'll be at the Dome. There's no place like Dome. Um, you know, but other than that, bro, just coaching end of the season coming up. We got a couple championships to play in, a couple playoff, uh, and, and two leagues that we're playing in the playoffs are coming up in about three weeks, mid March. Just prepping for that, bro. But other than that, my brother, nothing. What you got? Well, I'll tell you what the fuck I got. I got some shit going. All right, I'm gonna let you know. All right, next next weekend, March fourth and fifth. We got the ED two three hoops girls and boys tryouts. Girls on the Saturday, Salve Community Center. Boys on the Sunday at the same place. You can go Ooh, online. Good old yeah, good old. You know how we get it in in Salve. Yes, sir. You can go <laughs> on Instagram, Twitter, ED two three hoops. You got to sign up, register to be a part of the tryout, uh, and then also April third through six uh, at the uh, Fayetteville YMCA. Um, in Fayetteville, we have our spring break camp, Nike spring break camp that you helped help work a few times, Joe. So you know how the energy oh, yeah. and the enthusiasm is there. We Already. definitely, we definitely get it going. So check out all those things we got going, tryouts, camps, ED23 hoops, Instagram, Twitter, make sure you go on, check it so you can register, but that's, that's it, man. And then, and then we trying to get a dub tonight. We, we down in Clemson, South Carolina, we trying to get a dub, man. So hopefully we spoke some some good uh, energy, some good shit into these guys today. And we appreciate y'all coming on, man, checking us out. Yeah, Wednesday, 10 to 11. Yeah, I mean, man. You would, think, you would think some of you motherfuckers is working. But damn, you're here with us. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they locked in. Good. Once again, shout out to Melissa, man. She in here. She she rocking out. She keeping the chat interesting. She going back and forth. So 
And, and she definitely got the 23 and the 32 jerseys, man. So shout out to you Ooh, once again. Much man, love. Appreciate the support, man. For real. Appreciate the support. And hey, if you ever feel like throwing some bits in there, not only helping out us, but you're helping out our guy Jordan. You're helping out Galaxy Radio. We Oh, yeah. We all in this together, hey, man. Hey, funny ass story. Before we leave, before we leave, we probably got like 30 seconds. So the other day at my son's school, uh, we had, it was like movie night or whatever. And, you know, me and wifey go up there and the movie that they were showing was Up. And so we know, we see the old man from <laughs> Up. <laughs> and oh. I was like, you see, I say, remember, I, I had to say, remember when, uh, you know, when he's on, he's always saying that Jordan looked like the man from Up. This is who it is. And she started cracking up. We started laughing and shit. That was funny. But yo, shout out to Jordan. Jordan, I know shout you in the background Jordan. are probably laughing yourself. Shout out Jordan. Rosie, you the man, dog. Um, I appreciate y'all. You already know. Till next, Til next time. time, man. Let's get one tonight. We out.